Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out, uh, well, this week in EDM, we've got 31 songs that I wanted to talk about, as always, there's a Spotify link down below for all the songs in easy access, and so let's hop into it, 31 songs I wanted to talk about, and we're going to start off in the bad category, songs that I thought were not that great, remember, this is just my opinion, do not take them as gospel truth, uh, we've got David Guetta and Alesso featuring Madison Love with Never Going Home Tonight for two titans of the big room house scene. This track in particular uh, is potentially the biggest letdown of the year. Um, it's not like horrible, but a far cry for either one of their peaks. It's generic. It's dull. It lacks any creativity whatsoever. This might just be the most boring song of the year, I'm, I must say so. We've got Martin Jensen, Timmy Trumpet, and 666 with Ritmo Fatal, uh, Alarma in brackets, uh, with another, uh, yeah, kind of big room techno with a super annoying lead melody, I must say, and uh, just two minutes in length. This is just another sentence that's kind of hype track that doesn't really have much substance to it. But that's it for the bad category. We're moving into the meh category now. Songs I thought were uh, meh. We've got Sullivan King, Company, and Diesel featuring Shaquille O'Neal, which Diesel is Shaquille O'Neal. You don't need to put Shaq and Diesel in there. I know name value, whatever, but you don't need it. I would never come back is the name of the track. And in the land of a thousand fake outs, uh, we've also got some heavy dubstep and rocking like Dragon Force like guitars in the back end. Um, for just over two minutes, I'll give the song credit for jamming a lot into that two minutes, um, but just feel very disjointed and generally um, unfocused. Uh, and yeah, I just felt it was just trying to be heavy more so than anything else. So. Then we've got Alan Walker, Joe Jonas, and Julia Michaels with Thick of It All. Very much a nothing burger of a track. Uh, Joe and Julia don't really feel like mega superstars here, and instead they felt like they could have kind of just been replaced with anyone, I think, vocally. Um, Alan Walker's drum and bass production is a fun mix-up of sound for him, but generally on the linear side of things. And so I thought the track, I don't think it was bad, I just thought it was just very meh. Didn't really think about the song much, honestly. Then we've got the Chainsmokers and Kim Petras with Don't Lie, a stylistically quite new territory for the Chainsmokers and Kim Petras, going for a kind of more simple Euro core, Euro trash track. Um, the beat is simple and easily digestible and far from the worst thing either of them have put out in the last little while, so uh, not a bad tune if you like either one of them. We've got Armin Van Buren and Hardwell with Follow the Light, a very fine, I would say, big room techno collaboration that another, again, just kind of is. Um, nothing crazy one way or another, just big room techno track that will live off of the name value alone, uh, having Armin and Hardwell uh, as the producers. Then we got Kirby with Close Your Eyes. Uh, typical Kirby track right now with a fairly standard kind of tech or deep house beat and a lead melody that is both continually kind of stuttering and feels like it's continually being run through a high pass filter of sorts. Um, not my cup of tea of Kirby style tracks, but um, yeah, I think it's fine. Then we got Star Signs featuring Zella with Aries Mean Something to You from the new Fire Signs EP by Star Signs. And Star Signs, if you didn't know, is the triple collaborators of, I want to say that's uh, Mern, Yatep, and Manila Killa. Yeah, there's a bit of a, a letdown of a mega collab, honestly. It's techno with a kind of decent amount of life to it, but nothing really landed for me here. Um, yeah, sadly, that being said, I do think there's or, there's some stronger tracks here uh, on on this EP in particular, this this three, three track EP. But um, yeah, for the most part, I just wasn't really, I was whatever on it, so. We got Corbin Michael with Want You, Need You, uh, Champo's first kind of debut artist and Corbin Michael's, uh, yeah, first release as an artist here. And uh, he's got a good foundation, I would say, to build off of some hints of the kind of more digital electro sounds with these kind of 8-bit elements to it. And yeah, there's some, there's some fun elements here and there, but for the most part, I thought it was a pretty meh track. Then in a surprise twist, we've got Hush with Models. Uh, Hush's second track in six years now lands on NCS and sounds wildly different than his kind of future-based days of old. Uh, this is a trap cut that sounds like it belongs in like an underground hip-hop scene. Um, it's a strange comeback tune and an even weirder release for NCS, I would have to say, honestly. Um, again, another track I don't think was really bad, just maybe not my style and um, odd for Hush, I would say, more so than anything. I know trap and future-based kind of lend it, lend it well to each other and kind of cross paths a lot, but it was just kind of weird. Then we got Tiesto and Swimming Paul with VHS Rave. Uh, Tiesto was very much channeling his inner Fred again here uh, for this track with the kind of vocal recording samples, lighthearted house production. Um, this is very much an homage, if not, I would say a copycat of Fred Again's style. So uh, one that's not too bad, but again, I do think I would just go rather listen to Fred Again. 
But with that, we're moving into the good category songs I thought were pretty good. Uh, we've got Troy Boy and Scrafizer with Keep It Moving, uh, very much inspired by Skrillex's newest style from Quest for Fire. I would say it's got like kind of both of an Arabian and an almost like Rastafarian vibe to it, uh, and all kind of culminates into a very tonally diverse trap tune. So that's that. Then we got Will Sparks and Darren Styles with Scars, uh, a big room techno track with a lot of energy and coded in a very bright tone, which is a nice change of pace for the modern techno landscape right now. That's all very dark and moody, and um, I was actually surprised uh, how much I enjoyed this one. Then we got Raise Hell with Crush to Kill. Uh, I've been very hesitant of Drift Funk on Monster Cat as of late, uh, but this might be the best one yet, the best Funk track on Monster Cat, I might say. Uh, it's again, yes, very short as Funk typically is, and it's also pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, the drops kind of tend to sway more towards mid-tempo than Funk, I would say, uh, and that personally is where I think the genre is at its best. So the only track I think better than this song that's Funk on Monster Cat is The Fool one, I must say. So, uh, but yeah. Then we got Andrew Bayer and Oliver Smith with For You, my least favorite single, I would say, of the, uh, I think, three or four released up to this point. Um, and yeah, I don't think it's a bad tune. I just think it's not as dynamic as some of the other tracks have been favoring it more. And I would say a pretty simple melody, uh, lead melody, and uh, less kind of sweeping, uh, like, tonal movements. It was just more of a, yeah, more linear, more laid back. It was just a little bit more of a, a simplistic cut that I wasn't um, all for, but... In the end, I did enjoy it, uh, just not as much as some of the other ones that I was really, really in love with. But, And then we've got Marshmallow and Viper Active with In The Cut. Um, you know, this thing unironically slaps. Uh, it's actually a perfect mix of both producers' style here and manages to simultaneously be a really enjoyable tune. Um, I think Marshmallow might actually be his best when he's in this in-between where he's not quite this like old future bass trap sound, but also not this new like rhythm sound, kind of somewhere right in the middle. I think uh, he hits quite well, and I think Viper Active did a great job on this as well from the little bit I've heard from him. Then we got Dr. Ushu with Walk Away from the new Behind the Stars EP. High tempo drum and bass cut with this one, and actually some of my favorite Dr. Ushu production to date, I must say. Uh, it's not this kind of huge new sound in the scene, but it's it's expanded upon a formula that's worked quite well. And again, yes, I think um, I've heard a lot of uh, Dr. Ushu's like dubstep style that I'm not too favored, favorable on, but um, this drum and bass tunes are uh, kind of nice, or this one in particular, I would say. They got Flux Pavilion and Feed Me featuring Mish with the Survive Bad Computer remix. A bad computer with a surprise trap remix of an already stellar original track. Um, it's a remix that keeps a lot of the core sound intact and just kind of slightly mixes up a bit of the paint job all over. I'm kind of going from a more electronic, specifically like elec electro sound to this more trap sound. And uh, yeah, it's a good tune and I'm glad to see Bad Computer trying out some new genres. Then we got More Plastic with Pandora, a very nice uh, drum and bass tune with a more kind of abrasive synth lead um, and halftime final movement. That is, I would say, fairly typical for a More Plastic style track up to this point. But yeah, it's another solid cut from More Plastic, and I'm glad to see that they've got a solo debut on Monster Cat with this one. Then we got DJ Snake and Naomi Sharon with Goodbyes, or in brackets, Murr. Uh, surprisingly down to earth and intimate tune. It's got very like simple keyboard chords and um, those kind of work as the backbone of the track. It doesn't really stray away from that foundation. Um, Naomi's vocals are brilliant as well, and I think the whole thing is just layered in a in a sense of like just laid backness and kind of chill vibes uh, to a DJ Snake track. And I think that's might might be where DJ Snake actually uh, is the best. Maybe, maybe. And then we got Shallow uh, featuring Artie with On Your Own, the third single from Shallow's uh, upcoming project. This is another kind of progressive melodic house tune with these light ethereal vocals from both Shallow and Artie here. But um, also, is it Shallow? Have I been saying it wrong the whole time? Is it Shallow or is it Shallow? I'm not actually sure, but it's a, it's a pretty nice tune, so go listen to it. We've got Morgan Page, Morgan J, and Cloud Nun with Water, a big triple collab that actually sounds a lot like a Cloud Nun remix of a Morgan Page, Morgan J track. Um, just, yeah, I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me, honestly, because holistically, it's got a bit of a grooving future house tune, but with these kind of subtle Cloud Nun elements that are very, uh, like, <laughs> classic Cloud Nun. It's kind of hard to explain once you hear it. You're like, oh, yes, like, Cloud Nun is very much on here, but not the forefront uh, of the production, which makes sense in a triple collab. So, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed this tune a lot more than I expected to. I'm not going to lie. 
Then we got Above and Beyond featuring Richard Bedford with Heart of Stone, a big uh, progressive trance tune with strong vocals and big crashing movements. It's even got some house elements here and there and making it a not a kind of strictly trance song, kind of teeters the line between a more kind of progressive house and uh, the uplifting trance style that I think works really well in one of my favorite Above and Beyond tracks as of late. Then we got Slippy featuring Rico56 with Will. Uh, Slippy is still on this kind of new drum and bass grind, and it's definitely growing on me more so than I thought it was going to. I still don't think he's doing anything really new and innovative in the drum and bass scene, but it's um, hard not to say that this is like a great tune. Like it, it's just sounds good, it's solid, and um, I yeah, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And Slippy doesn't really care to with drum and bass, and I think it's great. Then we've got Evan Gaia with Anxiety Kills the Fabian Mazur remix, a less than two minute track that is almost a minute longer than the original. Uh, it's still very short, but feels substantially more like a completed track than the original. Uh, and honestly, Fabian Mazur goes pretty crazy with his trap production here, uh, even slowing things down and going quite deep uh, at the same time with that second movement, that extended, I would say, movement, because it's an under two minute track, something like that. But uh, that's that. Then we've got Nero with Nowhere to Hide from the new Into the Unknown LP. Nero is back. And um, yeah, this sounds pretty great. Uh, this track was a real highlight for me. It's not your typical Nero. I mean, it's kind of backing beat with a more kind of uh, basic, not I wouldn't say basic, but a more like typical four on the floors type beat, which we don't hear a ton from Nero. It's often uh, more drum and bass or dubstep. But um, yeah, it, you definitely still hear Nero's like sound signature, like uh, atmosphere and tone and vocal deliveries and even some rock and electric guitars here and there. It's a, a track that isn't typical Nero, but is, but regardless, sounds pretty good. So go listen to that and the new LP. Then we've got Butte Noise with Sleepy King, uh, a stunning atmosphere and storytelling with equally explosive dubstep production. Uh, Butte Noise really knocked it out of the park with this track all in all aspects, I will say. It's kind of a weird, this is like a double-sided single like EP release, but um, this one in particular, Sleepy King, uh, hit me in ways I did not expect it to, and uh, I enjoyed it a ton. Then we've got The Midnight with Chariot, uh, probably my favorite The Midnight track, yet maybe ever uh, it's a dark mid-tempo track with these pitched up and heavily like processed vocals that sounds um pretty foreign for the midnight or at least the midnight that i know i've heard it's maybe some closer to their older like i heard like 2017 stuff but um for me this one hit really hard and i want more of this for sure so maybe i need to go back to their, into their discography to hear more stuff like this but uh for now chariot uh baller track loving it then we've got Fred again, Duskus, Fortet, and Skrillex with Glow from the new 10 Days LP out now by Fred again. And this is an absolutely massive collab and a huge track for, I would say, of all these people, Duskus in particular, whose um, production is very evident here and probably the primary sound and atmosphere for a majority of this seven and a half minute uh, melodic house tune. It's very natural and beautiful and you hear very much elements of Fred again, a lot of Duskus, a lot of um, Fortet as well. Uh, not a ton of Skrillex, and that's kind of been happening with tunes like this lately with um, Skrillex, Fortet, and Fred again. We don't hear a ton of Skrillex, but um, still a absolutely baller tune uh, that is uh, not your typical listen, I would say. But uh, and Then we got Matt Zoe with Disco Boy. Uh, Matt Zoe is back on Mousetrap with a single that goes back to the earlier days of both uh, Matt Zoe as an artist and the label of Mousetrap. Um, it's a firm electro house tune with a rigid melody and long movements. Um, this has to be my favorite Matt Zoe track in quite some time, maybe the last three, four years, maybe. Um, great tune. Go listen to it. If you love old school electro, you'll like this a lot. And moving into the standout category now, are we've got one final song in standout, and it is indeed a remix. It is the Kotori and Dea remix of Speedrun, originally by Ace Aura and Skybreak. Absolutely crazy remix with a, an insane amount of unique styles, flows, and genres. This might generally be gener genuinely be um, one of the most impressive remixes uh, I've heard. Um, the ability to kind of balance all these different tones and genres and just like just sounds like it, it it's crazy. And on top of that, it's a remix, so you're already working with an original tune that was fantastic to begin with. And my goodness, they knocked it out. Out of the park this remix was nuts 
Um, but yeah, go if you anything, go listen to the remix, please, please, please. But uh, yeah, that's it for this week in EDM. Let me know what you guys think of any and all comments in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.